Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Michael Hayes. In this series of videos, we're helping you guys prepare for the EC6 Subject Core Exam as you prepare to become a Texas educator. In this series right now, we're focusing on science. More specifically, in this episode, we're focusing on energy coming up next. Okay, if this is the first episode you've seen in the series and would like to check out my past or future episodes, you can click on this YouTube card here in the corner. That will take you to my playlist. That playlist will have all the episodes in the order they were recorded and by topic. And so if you need to drill down and kind of get to what's most important to you right now, that would really help you out. Now, if you cannot see the, um, the YouTube card I pointed to, you can check the description below. I will have a link there as well. I will also link to a resource called The Big Yellow Book. Um, it is a great resource. I have no connection with the author or publisher. However, the more you talk to people that are successful in this exam, this resource comes up time and time again. Uh, I've actually ordered one for myself. I use it to help guide me and direct me in some of these videos. And so you can directly order it from the publisher and you can find those details in the description below. Now I'm going to do about five minute lessons. We will put the timer up here in the corner and once it gets down to zero, we will do a quick wrap up and then we'll pick up in the next episode where we finished up in this one. So let's go ahead and start with five minutes on the clock. So first of all, potential energy and kinetic energy are the two major forms of energy. First of all, potential energy is exactly as it sounds. It has the potential to turn into energy. So we have a few different varieties of that. First we have gravitational potential energy, and this is the ability of an object to turn into kinetic based upon its height off the ground. So if I had a book and I placed it on the top of a table, it took energy to get that book to move up there, plus whatever amount of mass that object has, it took that much more energy to lift it and move it. And so if that book were to fall off the table, it would turn into kinetic energy, which is the energy of motion, and it would have the ability to transfer that energy if it were to hit something. And so the heavier an object is, uh, if we look at Newton's laws of uh, motion, I'll put a link up here to that video, uh, force equals mass times acceleration. So the more uh, an object weighs or its mass is there, then it's going to take more energy to lift it off the ground. So if we took a bowling ball, we took it up a flight of stairs, it is going to have more energy than that book had because it, first of all, has more mass and we took it even higher off the ground. So it is now stored and can be released in energy once it begins to fall. Uh, other types of potential energy would be if I had a rubber band, for example, and I stretched it and pointed it at you, you probably duck and weave because if I were to let go, the energy it took me to stretch that rubber band out is now stored in it. And because of its elasticity, once I let go, it's going to release and come at you. And so it's now turned into kinetic energy and has the potential to hurt you. So you're going to duck and weave to get out of the rubber band's way. Another one would be chemical potential energy, which means an object that has the ability to combust or burn. It's going to give off heat and light in that process. This could be firewood. It could be, uh, you know, any kind of uh, gas such as natural gas, propane, kerosene, uh, things like that that have the ability to burn based upon their chemical properties. A match, if I were to strike it, it would, it would light and it's going to give off energy in a form of heat and light. So that is chemical potential energy. Now kinetic energy again is the energy of an object in motion. We see potential and kinetic energy constantly going back and forth with a roller coaster. If we take a roller coaster full of people, the energy is going to be given to the roller coaster because it is gradually taken up the first hill through a chain that's being uh, run up the roller coaster by mechanical energy because we're taking something that's electric or we're using gas or something to turn the gear. That gear is moving the chain. The chain is taking the um, roller coaster up the first hill. That roller coaster is very heavy with people in it. Once it drops off the first hill, the first hill is typically the highest because along its path it's now turning into kinetic energy as it drops. And then it goes up the next hill, starts losing a little bit of energy because now it's going back up and gravity is trying to push it down. Friction on the roller coaster against the track is going to slow it down. So each, each progressive hill is typically smaller and smaller because it's losing its energy along the way. Okay, So potential and kinetic energy, energy that's stored potential, energy in motion, kinetic. Now energy can be classified in, in several different types. We've already talked about chemical. It is the ability of something to burn. It's going to give off heat and light. Electrical energy, which is actually energizing the lights in my room right now, is taking electricity, which is the flow of electrons through a copper coil or other type of metal, and it's going to uh, release that energy in the form of light or mechanical energy. If I'm moving some sort of engine or motor, such as your washing machine, that would be electrical. Nuclear energy is the energy of, an, uh, of nuclear items such as uranium, which we use in nuclear power plants, and it is basically um, going through a process called uh, fission where an atom is splitting its nucleus and that's a lot of energy that's stored 
And so it's going to be giving off lots of energy. It's clean energy, by the way. It does not produce the uh, types of greenhouse gases and things. But it does contaminate things around it, which has to be stored for several thousands of years. Um, we have another video that talks about that. But anyway, uh, that's another form of energy. Radiant energy, which is like the energy from the sun that heats the earth in the atmosphere. We also see radiant energy that's being given off through that match. When you light it, you can feel heat given off from it. Sound energy, which is the vibration of molecules. My voice right now, as I am uh, breathing out, that energy from my lungs is passing past my vocal cords. My vocal cords are vibrating and vibrating the molecules of that air. As it leaves my mouth, it is vibrating the condenser on the microphone or our eardrums, uh, and it's going to uh, come off in a form of sound. Uh, sound travels really well through water and solids and gases. Uh, solids is the best form of transfer of energy of sound. Then would come liquid, then comes air. And that's why whales can, uh, and dolphins and things can communicate long distances through water because it vibrates the molecules of water because they're tighter together than air. And of course, solids are even tighter than that. Now, heat energy, again, is the energy of uh, heat being given off. There's uh, different types of heat energy, conduction, uh, radiation, and convection. Now, convection, think about a convection oven. Uh, we're going to keep going for just a little bit longer. I'm sorry, I can't get these all in five minutes. Uh, convection would be, uh, you know, like in your oven, we heat up something at the bottom, and it's going to rise the air inside your oven, and it's going to uh, cause it to rise up cool down right and flow flow like this. We see this in the atmosphere when uh, molecules are heated up in our air. Uh, we also have uh, conduction. Uh, that is, uh, conduction would be when two things are in contact with each other. Uh, it conducts energy so that um, if you heat up the bottom of a pan full of water, the pan heats up, heating the water inside, causing it to boil, which is convection inside. And then radiation, of course, we mentioned that when heat is coming off in the form of uh, a lighting a match or the heat coming off your stove again. Uh, transfer of energy uh, is conduction, convection, radiation. Uh, physical changes could be melting the process of uh, an object being able to melt. So we're going to use water, for example. When ice melts, it melts at exactly uh, zero degrees, believe it or not, at the same point that it freezes. So right there, there's this little quality of, of whether it's going to melt or freeze. And we're talking about Celsius because it's a scientific way that we measure uh, things in science. At 100 degrees, it's going to boil. Uh, the molecules start to heat up and they start to energize and it turns into steam. The boiling point of water would be 100 degrees Celsius. Everything has a different boiling or melting point depending on its physical properties. And then we also have freezing point. Again, zero degrees with water is going to freeze at that point. The molecules start to get closer together. The energy process uh, gradually comes down and eventually freezes into a solid. So uh, boiling point, melting point, and freezing point are all physical characteristics or physical properties of matter. Okay, we kind of went a little bit over five minutes. It seems to be the case here lately, so we really should be saying these are eight minute videos or whatever it took. But anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please uh, let me know in the comments below. If you have a question, please leave that there. I will get back with you about any topic, really. I could kind of get back with you on anything. So feel free to leave that comment below. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, that lets me know that these videos are helping. So subscribe, hit the notification bell that lets you know when new videos come up. If uh, you are successful in your test, please let me know. I will do a shout out to you. And uh, if you comment below and I love your comment, I will be happy to uh, make your comment public in the next video. So thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time on Mr. Hayes' YouTube channel.